now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on Huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Fellas and girls, on your mark, get set. We're off. Yes, off to another new series of exciting adventures with Sergeant Preston and King. Brought to you at the same time every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday by Quaker Puffed Rice and Quaker Puffed Wheat. A keen-tasting, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. So get set for the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Ask Mom for rice or wheat shot from guns. Remember, it comes only in those famous big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. You'll say, here's the breakfast we like to eat, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Dave Owen had staked a small claim on Siwash Creek. But the claim had soon petered out, and Dave was forced to go to work as a hired hand at the Fantan Mine near Mukluk City. Mukluk City was a tough mining camp, and as the weeks went by, Dave's wife Nora found life more and more intolerable in such surroundings. One evening, as she cleared away the supper dishes, Nora spoke to their ten-year-old son, Jackie. Jackie, you and Spud run out and play for a while. I want to talk to your father. What is it you want to talk about, Nora? Well, Dave, we just can't go on like this. Mukluk City might be all right for a lot of drunken sourdoughs and Indians, but it's no place to raise a child, and it's no place for us either. I want a decent home and decent surroundings. Now, Nora, you know this arrangement is only temporary. I'm only working at the Fantan Mine long enough to save up money for another prospecting trip. Oh. Now, Nora, if you'll just be patient and have faith in no, me... No, Dave. I've been patient too long as it is. I'm sick of the Yukon, sick to death of it. Life has been nothing but a nightmare ever since we stepped off the boat at Skagway. Now I'm through. What? What do you mean? Just what I say. I'm through. I'll give you a week to make up your mind what you're going to do. At the end of that time, I'm going to Dawson and catch the next boat that leaves for the outside. Either with you or without you. And what about Jackie? Jackie is coming with me. I think I'll have something to say about that. Dave Owen, if I leave here, I'm taking Jackie with me. My son is entitled to a normal boyhood. He's entitled to a decent schooling, and he's entitled to a few playmates his own age. Yes, and a man is entitled to a wife who'll stick by him when the going is tough. It's no use trying to play on my sympathies, Dave. My mind is made up. A week from today, I'm leaving for Dawson. And Jackie is coming with me. Oh, my mind is made up, too. I'm staying right here. And Jackie is staying with me. Where are you going? I'm going to the cafe where I can get some peace and quiet. Neither Dave nor Nora knew that every word they said had been overheard by Jackie through the open window. Dave Owens went to the Northern Lights Cafe. A short time later, two men entered the cafe. One was a tough-looking sourdough named Hank Sutter. The other was a man named Lefty Gould. Howdy, you. Hey. Oh, hello there, Sutter. Howdy, Gould. Yeah, mind if we sit down? Right ahead. The more the merrier. <laughs> you look kind of down in the mouth, Owen. What's wrong? You don't like the way I look? There's plenty of other tables around. Now, don't go getting your dander up. I was just asking. 
thought maybe if it was money that was bothering you, you might be interested in a little proposition. What kind of a proposition? Every so often, the Fantan sends a shipment of gold dust to the bank in Dawson City. You and Mitch Wells always make the trip together. That's right. What about it? You and Wells always start out at night. Nobody knows beforehand which night you're leaving or which route you're taking. That makes it pretty tough for anyone as might be planning to hold you. What are you driving at, Sutter? If you'd be willing to cooperate a little, all three of us could pick ourselves up a nice piece of change. Just what do you mean by cooperate? <laughs> Shucks, do I have to spell it out for you? I mean, you tip me and left you off beforehand which night you're leaving and which way you're going. Ah, you sneaking polecat, get away from all me. All right, all right, don't raise your voice. We just thought you might be interested. Well, I'm not. So clear out, both of you. Just uh, one thing before we go on. What's that? You used to work your own claim once upon a time over on Siwash Creek. That's a lot different from shoveling gravel for someone else at 15 bucks a day. I don't aim to be working at the Fantan all my life. One of these days, I'll make another strike Not on and 15 bucks a day, you won't. To make a decent prospecting trip, you'll need a three-month grub stake. Now, from what I hear, the Fantan sends out about $15,000 worth of dust in each shipment. That'd be five grand for me, five grand for Lefty, and five grand for you. Five thousand dollars. You could do a lot of prospecting on five grand. Yeah, yeah. I, I sure could. You still want us to leave? Now, now, look, suppose I threw in with you. How would I explain to my wife and everybody else where I got the money from? It'd be a dead giveaway that I was in on the hold. No, it wouldn't. You could pretend you got the money by selling your claim on Siwash Creek. What? A worthless claim for 5,000 bucks? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Who would I say bought it? You could say Lefty and me bought it. Let them think you put one over on us. We'll even go through a regular legal transaction. That ought to be proof enough that anyone gets suspicion. I, uh... I don't know what to say. Don't be a fool, Owen. This is your chance, so grab it. All right. It's a deal. Good. Now, when does the next shipment of gold leave? Tomorrow night. Which route are you taking to Dawson City? Over the ridge to Point Creek Trail. Follow the Creek Trail of the river. Then straight west into Dawson. All right. Lefty and me will be waiting with masks on when you and Wells go by. Now, tomorrow night at the mouth of Pine Creek. Sergeant Preston was returning from a two-week patrol of the country east of the Klondike. As he rode through Mukluk City with a great dog king trotting at his stirrup, he suddenly heard a familiar voice shouting his name. Sergeant Preston! Hey, Sergeant, wait a minute! Why, it's Jackie Owen. Oh, Blackie. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Gee, Sergeant, am I glad to see you. Do you want to talk to me about something, Jackie? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, part of your job is helping people in trouble, isn't it, Sergeant Preston? Yes, Jackie. That's one of the main reasons the Northwest Mounted Police was founded, to give help where help's needed. You in trouble? Oh, yes, sir. That is, I am in a way. You see, my mother and father aren't going to live together anymore. Oh? Mom says she's going back to the States, and Dad says he's going to stay here in the Yukon and hunt for gold. I'm sorry to hear that, Jackie. If I have to choose between going with Mom or staying here with Dad, well... well Gosh, I don't know what I'll do. I, I was wondering if maybe you could talk to them and make them change their minds. Well, I'm afraid that's a little out of my line, Jackie. I don't think your mother and dad would welcome the idea of my poking my nose into their personal affairs. But you said you're supposed to give help where help is needed. Can't you please do something? Well, all right, Jackie. Suppose I have a talk with your father, but I warn you, I don't think it'll do much good. Oh, gee. Thanks, Sergeant. Where is your dad? The cabin? No, he's at the cafe. All right, Jackie, I'll go speak to him. Get up, Blackie. Get up there. As Sergeant Preston reined up in front of the cafe, Dave Owen was just coming out the door. Oh, Blackie, easy now. Hi there, Sergeant. Oh, hello, Dave. I'm just looking for you. Want to have a talk with you? Talk with me? What about? I just saw Jackie a few minutes ago. He tells me that you and Nora are going to uh, separate. And what business is that of yours? None of my business, Dave. I admit that. I wouldn't be butting in at all if it weren't for Jackie. What's Jackie got to do with it? Well, I think he's got everything to do with it. The boy needs a mother, and he needs a father, too. He can't get along without either one of them. Well, what do you expect me to do? 
Nora wants me to go back to the States and sponge off her folks till I get back on my feet. I, I'm hanged if I'll do that. Well, I'm not offering you any easy solution, Dave. Maybe there isn't any. I'm just asking that you and Nora try to work out some compromise for Jackie's sake, if not for your own. All right, Sergeant. I'll promise you that. I guess that's the least we can do. Dave Owen returned home to his cabin. Both Nora and Jackie listened as he said, Look, honey, I've just been talking to Sergeant Preston. He made me realize that Jackie... Well, that Jackie needs us both together. So if you still want to go back to the States, then I'm willing to pack up and go with you. Dave, I'll make you a proposition. We'll stay here for six more months. I'll scrimp and save as much as I can. You go ahead and make your prospecting trip. And if you don't make a strike, then we'll go back to the States. Oh, gosh, Nora, that's wonderful. I promise you, you won't regret it. Does that mean you two aren't going to split up like you said you were? <laughs> that's right, son. No matter what happens, we're all going to stay together. You and your mother and I, and, and Spud, too. <laughs> all for us. Oh, huh? golly, that's the best news I ever heard. <laughs> Hank Sutter and Lefty Gould lived in a shack on the edge of town. The morning after his reconciliation with Nora, Dave stopped off at the shack on his way to work at the Fantan Mine. Oh, it's you on. Come on in. No, thanks, Sutter. I'll make it short and sweet. That hold-up business is off. Who says it's off? I do. I must have been crazy to even think of such a thing. Yeah? Well, Lefty and me are still thinking of it. And what's more, we're going through with it. Now, wait, you can't do that. Who's going to stop? I'll you? stop you. I'll tell the boss at the Fantan exactly what you're planning to do. Yeah? And what are you going to say when he asks how you am to know so much about our plans? Why, well, I... I'll tell him the truth. Let me tell you something, Owen. Lefty and me had no way of knowing about that shipment tonight unless you told us. If you try squealing on us, we'll say the whole thing was your idea. So you better keep your mouth shut and play along. Otherwise, all three of us will wind up behind bars. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice offer these three important things you're after in a ready-to-serve breakfast cereal. One, flavor. Swell, nut-like flavor. Two, crispness. Tender, melt-in-your-mouth Christmas. Three, nourishment. Added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are the famous cereals shot from guns. Yes, huge guns are loaded with only the premium wheat or rice grains. Then these choice kingpin kernels are exploded up to eight times normal size. Yes, actually shot from guns to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are puffed to perfection, shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Don't wait. Get both delicious kinds, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Eat the wheat one day, rice the next. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk, but comes only in the big Quaker red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Now to continue our story. It was close to midnight when Dave Owen and Mitch Wells rode away from the Fantan Mine. Each man carried a pair of heavy leather pouches loaded with gold dust slung across his saddle. Dave, intimidated by Hank Sutter's threats, had said nothing to his boss, but he was still hoping desperately to prevent the holdup. As the two men rode side by side along the Pine Creek Trail, Dave spoke nervously. Hey, look, Mitch. Don't you think it'd be better if we cut across the bench land? So we hit the river down below the mouth of the creek? Yeah, what's eating you, Dave? You've been jumpy as a cat ever since we left the mine. Nothing's eating me. It was just an idea, that's all. Well, relax and forget it. We'll get there just the way we're going. Get Come it. on, get up. Dave said nothing more, but his nervousness seemed to increase as they continued along the trail. 
Nearly an hour later, they approached the mouth of the creek. Suddenly, they reined up at a sharp command. Get your hands up, you two. <laughs> hey, what's the idea? What do you think? Get them way up high, both of you, while I take your guns. Get up there. Easy. Get up there. Get up. Steady. Hold on. Oh, and don't try any funny stuff while he's doing it. I'll drill the first one who makes a false move. Yeah, yeah that's better. Now, heave off those gold sacks you got slung over your saddles. There's mine. All right. Turn your horses around and get going. And don't bother looking back over your shoulder. Come on, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Dave and Mitch separated, and it was morning when Wells reached Dawson City. He rode straight to Mounted Police Headquarters and told his story to Sergeant Preston. Sounds like a well-planned job. Apparently they knew you were coming. They knew all right. And I think I know who told them. Who? Dave Owen. Dave Owen? What makes you suspect him? He was jumpy and nervous right from the time we left the mine. Then when we were riding along Pine Creek, he tried to talk me into cutting over the bench land so he'd miss the mouth of the creek. Well, that's funny. Sounds as though he knew the holdup men were there and wanted to avoid them. Because he got cold feet at the last minute, that's why. Well, Mitch... I hope your suspicions aren't justified, but we'll check on Dave just the same. First, we'll go to Pine Creek and put King on the trail of the holdup men. Come on, King. <laughs> Several hours later, Sergeant Preston and Mitch Wells arrived at the mouth of Pine Creek. King soon picked up the scent of the holdup men. The trail led back along the river for several miles, then turned north along Siwash Creek. About half an hour later, the sergeant and his companion came in sight of a small cabin. Uh, looks like King is heading right for that cabin. You know who owns that cabin, Mitch? Oh, I haven't the slightest idea. It belongs to Dave Owen. Dave Owen? Yes. Dave used to have a claim here on Siwash Creek. Still does, I guess. He and his family used to live in this cabin before they moved to Mucklock City. Yeah, then my hunch must be right. Dave was in with those hold-up men. Getting to look that way. Hold there, hold like he. Hold there, hold. Steady, go ahead. place is empty. Yes, but someone's lived here more recently than the Owens. Look at those dirty dishes and the food up there on the shelf. Yeah, you're right, Sergeant. You must have used this cabin as a hideout. Hey, what's the matter with King? Sounds like he's found something out in the woodshed. Come on, Mitch. We better see what's up. He's found something, all right. Sergeant, that's one of the Fantan gold sacks. Buried under a pile of wood. Let's see if there's any more. There's another one. There's one more. Three all together. Is that all over? No, there were four of them. One of these sacks is partly empty. That's funny. That's not the only thing that's funny. What do you mean? I just noticed this pick and shovel in the corner here. Well, what about them? They probably left him here when he moved away. It was almost a year ago, Mitch. The dirt on these tools is fresh. Well, let's see. By golly, that's a fact. It is fresh. What do you suppose it means, Sergeant? I'm not sure, Mitch, but I have an idea where to look for an answer. Come on, King, let's go, boy. When Dave Owen separated from Mitch Wells, he had returned to Mucklock City and reported the holdup to his boss. Then he went home to his cabin and slept until late the following morning. Nora fixed him a late breakfast. There's your coffee, Dave. Thanks. Anything else you want? No, no, I'm, I'm all set. You go ahead with your washing. Oh, the washing's all finished. I've just got to hang it out to dry. Jackie's out back now stringing up the clothesline for me. Who's that? Why, Dave, what are you so jumpy about? You spilled your coffee all over the table. That robbery last night... Never mind that. Go see who it is. All right. Oh, good morning. Howdy, ma'am. We're looking for Dave Owen. Won't you come in? Who is it, Nora? Just Dave, me and Lefty. Hank Sutter... Nora, you go on out back with Jackie. I I think these two men would like to speak to me alone. Oh, of course, Dave. I was just going out anyway. What's the idea coming here to my cabin? Well, what do you suppose? We came here to give you your share of the gold. I don't want any of the gold. Keep it all to yourselves. Now, go and get out of here, both of you. Listen, Owen. You were in on that hold-up last night just as much as we were. So don't try squirming out of it. You're going to take your share of the gold, whether you like it or not. For Pete's sake, Sutter, I can't afford to have that much gold found in my possession. Even if I wanted this stuff, it'd be a dead giveaway. Stop worrying. 
I've already told you how to handle that. You can say you got the gold by selling us your claim. Yeah, I got the agreement right here in my pocket, all written out. Come on. Bring it over here to the table where he can sign it. I'll clear away some of these dishes. Good idea. Yeah, now then, Dave. Let me read you what it says. It says, I, David Owen, hereby transfer all rights to my claim on Siwash Creek to Henry Sutter and William Gould in exchange for the sum of $5,000 in gold. There, how's that? You can just sign it here at the bottom and Lefty and me will witness it. Don't sign that, Dave. Don't go for your guns, see. either, do you? Hey, uh, Preston, where did you come from? If you hadn't been so busy trying to swindle Dave, you might have heard us come in the front door. King was at the sergeant's side. Mitch Wells followed close behind. What's wrong, Sergeant? I think I'll let you do the explaining, Dave. I... I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. Sutter and Lefty are the men who pulled that hold up last night. And that looks like the rest of the gold they stole right there on the table. There's no doubt about it, Sergeant. This is a sack we couldn't find. There's some more gold in this canvas poke. One third of the loot, in other words. You'd better come clean, Dave. All right, I... I guess you've got me, Sergeant... I tipped them off about the gold shipment. They promised to split with me. But after I talked to you, Sergeant, I changed my mind and tried to back out. They went through with the holdup anyway. This morning, they came here and tried to make me take a share of the gold. Did you say they tried to make you take a share of the gold? It's the truth, Sergeant. I didn't want any part of it. Now, what about that deed they were trying to talk you into signing? Sutter said it would give me an alibi for my share of the gold. Huh? I could pretend I got the money by selling him and left him my old claim on Siwash Creek. This is all beginning to add up. I wish you'd explain it to me. At that moment, the back door opened. The sergeant's attention wavered momentarily. Sutter saw his chance and acted fast. He kicked the gun out of the sergeant's hand. King charged at Sutter, but left. He whipped out his gun. Call off that dog, Preston, or I'll plug him. Down, King. Down, fella. Dave, for heaven's sakes, what's happening? Sergeant Preston was holding a gun on these two crooks. When you opened the door, Sutter kicked the gun out of his hand. Oh. Yes, indeed, lady. You showed up at just the right time. Sergeant, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Don't worry, Nora. You couldn't help it. What do you think we better do with these people, Hank? We better tie them up, that's what. But first, let's get this confounded dog out of the way. That's one critter I don't aim to tangle with anymore. What do we do with him? Shut him up in a bedroom. Preston, order your mutt to go in the other room. Go in the other room, King. Over there, fellow. That's it. In that room. Slowly and reluctantly, King left his master's side and retreated into the bedroom. Now, keep him covered while I go over and lock the door shut. Hank Sutter shut the bedroom door, then propped a chair under the knob to prevent King from working the door open with his paws. Yeah, I guess that ought to hold him. There's some rope hanging up over there on the wall, Hank. Go get it and we'll start tying these people up. The two crooks tied each of their prisoners hand and foot. Sergeant Preston's wrists were shackled with his own handcuffs. <laughs> Monty, you'll have to be a magician to wriggle out of that tie-up. All right, Lefty. Grab the gold and let's get going. All right. I got it. Now, let's make tracks for the border. The crooks had hardly gone out the front door when the back door opened and Jackie Owen came rushing into the cabin. Jackie! I was There's watching through the window. Here. That's how I knew what happened. I better get Sergeant Preston loose first. We haven't got much time. The key to these handcuffs in the upper right pocket of my tunic, Jackie. I'll find it. What did you mean when you said we didn't have much time? While those two crooks were tying you people up, I untied all the horses and drove them into the draw. Oh? The crooks are probably looking for them right now. But I'll bet they come back here when they can't find them. Oh, Jackie, you deserve a medal. There. The handcuffs are open. Thanks. Now I'll get my knife and cut these ropes around my ankles. As the sergeant's knife was sawing through the last strand of rope, the front door opened. Hank Sutter burst into the cabin with Lefty Gould close behind him. Look out, Lefty! Preston's loose! That's right, Sutter, I am. The sergeant grabbed a plate from the table and hurled it at Sutter's head. Lefty, shoot him! Lefty's gun was already out of his holster. He aimed it at the sergeant. I'll take care of you, Murray. The shot went wild as King sprang at Lefty's gun hand. Hey, where'd this dog come from? The sergeant sprinted toward the doorway and jumped on Hank Sutter. Don't try reaching for your gun, Sutter. You won't stop me, Preston. Oh, nope. Sutter fought back furiously, but he was no match for Sergeant Preston. Slowly but surely, he weakened under the Mounties' hammering fists. Meanwhile, Lefty was cowering against the wall in terror of King's savage lunges. Oh, all right, Preston. Don't hit me again. I'm lit. You can take my gun. Just don't hit me again. And get this dog off of me, Preston. For the love of Mike, get him away from me. All right. On guard, King. He's had enough. As for you, Sutter, and you, Gould, get your hands up high and keep them there. You're both under arrest in the name of the Queen. A short time later, Dave and Nora Owen and Mitch Wells had been released, and the two crooks handcuffed together. 
thank heaven King showed up in time. When that man pointed his gun at you, Sergeant, I thought sure you were a goner. Well, I'd sure like to know how King got out of that room. That's something I'd like to know myself, Mitch. I'll tell you how he got out, Sergeant. Huh? I just took a look in the bedroom. Well, how did he get out, Jackie? The window was open about a foot or so. King must have squeezed through. Oh, good old King. <laughs> you always find a way when I need you, don't you, fella? Sergeant, there's still something I don't understand. Why did you shout at me not to sign that deed of sale for my claim? Because if you had... You'd have been signing away a small fortune. Oh, Sergeant, that claim is worthless. Oh, no, it isn't, Dave. Sutter and Gould have been living at your cabin on Siwash Creek. King trailed them there from the scene of the holdup. There was a pick and shovel in the woodshed that had been freshly used. Someone has recently uncovered a fresh vein of gold in a mighty rich one, too. What's that? Oh. Then no wonder they were so anxious to have me sell them that claim. Yes, Dave. Apparently they were afraid of making you an offer for the claim for fear of putting you on guard. So they cooked up this hold-up scheme as a way to swindle you out of it. That right, Sutter? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I guess there's no use lying about it now. In other words, Dave, it looks as though you and Nora will have a pretty rosy future to look forward to. <coughs> yes, King boy, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, whether you're in the great rugged Yukon or here at home, you need plenty of food energy. Yes, and if you were to ask Sergeant Preston, you can bet he'd agree that a good breakfast is a mighty important source of food energy. So here's a tip. See to it that you eat a nourishing He-Man's breakfast. You'll want to include a big heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Try it. Wheat or rice shot from guns is crisp, tender, delicious. What's more, it furnishes added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Tomorrow, ask for Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice in the famous big red and blue Quaker package. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the boy who feared dogs. When I first met Tommy Elliott, he was running away from home because his father had tried to force him to overcome his fear of dogs. When Tommy returned home several weeks later, he was a greatly changed boy. Neither of us knew that he would find his father seriously wounded by outlaws and that those same outlaws would come within an ace of killing both King and me. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Yes, it's still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.